Hello, hello, and welcome back here at the main stage at Drupal Jam 2022. We are going to start now a uh, new initiative, being a talk show. And in this talk show, we have four uh, key persons from the Drupal community and Drupal uh, companies um, around in the Netherlands. Um, so let me first um, introduce, well, let me actually first introduce my, uh, my co-host, uh, Bert uh, Boerland. Um, Bert is here for uh, technical uh, background and um, uh, yeah, you really know all about uh, Drupal, right? I am uh, open source ambassador, so I will go more into the topic of open source. All right, so um, let's do a uh, quick round of introductions. May I ask uh, Michel to start uh, with your... Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> see, that was what we were practicing. Um, uh, uh, Matthias, can Hi. you please start with uh, introducing yourself? Uh, I'm Matthias, I'm the owner of Swiss, uh, a digital HD based in Leiden, uh, very big on Drupal, but also other technologies. And I think there are almost 20 of our uh, co-workers here today at Drupal Jam. Wow. All right, thank you very much and welcome and thanks for sponsoring this event. Thank you. Uh, now it's really Michel. Yes. <laughs> Hi, um, Michel van Veldi. I am the managing director of IO Campus Utrecht. Um, we're here today with many colleagues uh, and a lot of Drupalistas, fan of Drupal since uh, a very long time. I'm uh, previously uh, been a board member of the Drupal Association oh, yeah. um, and a long-term community member. Excellent. Thank you and welcome as well. Um, next, we have Heine. Heine, can you give a short introduction of yourself? Yes, I'm one of the owners of Limoen Groen, a digital agency based in Amsterdam. Uh, we use mostly Drupal, Symfony, and React. Um, and um, I'm also personally involved with, with contributions to Drupal uh, by uh, reporting security issues and sometimes helping out with security issues via the security team. Awesome, really cool. Yeah. And Tom? My name is Tom van Vliet. Uh, I work at Finalist. Uh, Finalist is a company which holds a lot of technologies. One of the technologies is Drupal. I am the team lead of the Drupal division. And um, um, together with, uh, with the co-workers, we work at a lot of uh, issues in the Drupal community, uh, contributions to modules, uh, for instance. Um, uh, and uh, we are here with somewhat tw 20 people today. Okay. Um, so. Glad to be here. Absolutely, and welcome, and thank you very much for all for uh, being here. Uh, by the way, if there are questions from uh, the room here, uh, feel free to uh, raise your hand or let us know, and we will um, uh, uh, drop the questions at these, uh, these gentlemen. Um, first question I am going to ask is uh, to Matthias. You are a Managing Director of uh, Swiss. Can you give us a quick insight how Swiss is doing? Uh, Swiss is doing uh, really fine. We've grown a lot in uh, last year, um, basically because of Drupal, because before a uh, few years we were not very much concentrated really on Drupal. Mm -hmm. And when we really focused on it, uh, the, the growth come with that. We passed the 40 people mark last year, so that was a big milestone. So we we think we are now uh, a really good mid-size agency that's uh, for us the right size to uh, address the, the questions of our clients and very happy on some new big headless projects we're going to do uh, this year. So we're doing fine, yes. Wow, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Michel, um, your company is called IO. Yes. What does that stand for? Uh, it stands for Infinite Opportunities, uh, and this is what we uh, would like to offer our colleagues uh, and to our clients as well, because of our integrated proposition. And uh, I.O., uh, the abbreviation, I guess you can fill it in for other things as well? Yes, absolutely, uh, but our main focus is Infinite Opportunities, yeah. All right, okay. Um, uh, Heine, um, you are fully working back in the office again nowadays? Or is it still a hybrid or uh, at home? We have a hybrid approach. Uh, we have one day uh, a week where we work at the office. And uh, also when we have our, well, play day or our uh, technology renewal day, yeah. then we also uh, try to be together in the office so we, we can uh, interact easier on, on new ideas. 
and also to it makes it easy to show those I, uh, IDs. Yeah. Um, and what we also see is that a lot of meetings with clients are still uh, online, and it saves us a lot of time uh, because uh, we don't have to travel to those meetings. So, so you can do much more work in one week if you have uh, online uh, presence. Yeah, yeah, a combination of online yes. presence. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Thank you, um, uh, Tom. How is that for uh, for finalists? Is you also uh, hybrid or working from home? Yeah, uh, really the hybrid situation. I yeah. think. I think. Uh, um, in the developer community, uh, it is quite normal to work from, from home. And, and, uh, it was also easy to make the shift uh, when, of course, the lockdown happened. Yeah. Um, but we believe in it. We think um, it, it is uh, an, uh, in, in, in this crowded uh, land we are in and uh, with, with all the traffic jams, it's a good thing to not be on the road always. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I think for companies like our, uh, like our company, uh, it brought an acceleration as well. I think, um, uh, as Heine pointed out, the, the working from home and uh, having meetings online saves a lot of time for clients as well as uh, our own developers. Clear. Um, yeah. Which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, and... Um, uh, You decided to sponsor this yep. event here. Um, what's the reason for sponsoring an event like uh, Drupal Jam? Um, I think Drupal stands out as a, as a community-driven technology framework. So um, it, it is important that uh, companies like Finalist um, uh, help uh, supporting the community. Um, so it is a way to uh, keep Drupal alive. And of course, uh, um, thanks to Drupal, we are helping our customers. So we think it's, it's a no-brainer to be here as a sponsor because we can do it. Of course, it's not possible for every company. No. We think for our company it is, uh, it is possible and important to do it. Okay, well, thank you. Um, first uh, open question I have for you is, uh, we all watched uh, Dries Note, and in Dries Note was a lot of conversation about uh, Drupal 10, but also already on 11. Who of you would like to jump into the topic of uh, what's uh, your vision on uh, Drupal 11? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the thing I like most about uh, the Drupal 11 vision is it is going back more to the core of Drupal, uh, the vision of on the ambitious site builder. Mm -hmm. I don't know who that is. Am I this ambitious site builder? Are these my clients? Is that somebody working at my client? But the, the great thing, if you look at the initiatives, is we really like the recipe ID. So, and I think that could be a great innovation uh, for the community, so you can present a, a, a lot of uh, modules together that produce some outcome for, for a client. And it, it, distributions done right, I think, can really be important to the Drupal project so, so that we maintain all the scalability and the infinite problems you can solve with Drupal, but also get easy out of the gates with a, with a complete solution. And that is where Drupal maybe was lacking uh, mm -hmm. compared to other CMSs in the past. So that is where I'm most uh, enthusiastic about. All right, cool. The, you all three agree uh, with this vision on uh, Drupal 11 or different opinions? Uh, well, I got a positive and, and, and uh, well, I got an opinion about it. Um, <laughs> That's and, why and we're the positive here. thing is, is that Drupal is going back to its roots. Uh, yep. Drupal is there for the ambitious developer as it always has been. Um, and um, the, the fact, you know, from a marketing point of view, I'm a marketeer and yep. uh, a brand strategist. Um, I don't understand the fact that they've chosen the word ambitious developer as... Site builder. A, a, a ambitious site builder um, as a, a, a focal point. Uh, because when you talk about your 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 mission and your vision um, and, and your statement, you should focus at, at the end user. And now we're we're taking an inward look at the community uh, and, and focusing on the ambitious site builder again. Yeah, yeah. And Drupal has come from that point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I've been in the community for about 16 years, so so I know where it's coming from, and it's done a, a tremendous and, and great job. But I think you know we've come to the you know when we decided to move to Drupal 8, we've been focusing on the end user. 
you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the upmarket uh, enterprise end user. So I, make, I, I see a shift going back to where Drupal was when it was at, well, six or seven. Yeah. yeah, Michel, and yeah. what do you think uh, is the end user in your use case? Because yeah. uh, Matthias pointed out, that of course, there can be uh, an ambitious site builder in a company which is the end user uh, when using the content framework Drupal, right? True, true. Um, but w when you look at the talk, it's most about talking about developers. Uh, and we're talking about an open source developer community. And yes, there are developers within companies, true. But also those um, uh, developers are working for end clients, you know, and from a marketing perspective, you should always focus on your end client. Yeah, and and that, that's why where I think uh, the, the whole development uh, is also um, interesting, uh, not because of the ambitious site builder uh, name. Yeah. Um, what what I kind of miss in the in the whole new strategy is uh, Drupal is just a part of an ecosystem. Yes. Uh, the end user, which we yeah. are talking about, or the the, the company or the market mm -hmm. companies use lots of tools. And yep. I think Drupal should be far more about using the tools and integrating with those tools. I think that's yep. something where Drupal has, uh, uh, has uh, strong capabilities. Mm -hmm. So why not point, uh, point out the, uh, the combination of those tools, which are, of course, uh, meant for the end user. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And, and when you look at it, um, over the last one and a half years, Drupal has been referred to as a DXP, a digital experience platform. Now we're talking about Drupal being a CMS again. Uh, yeah. And the question is, okay, are we positioning Drupal as a DXP and start collaborating with other open source projects like uh, an open source... Uh, um, uh, like uh, Mautic. Mautic or, or a, a, a digital asset management system, a CRM system, yeah. and, and start collaborating and offering a total end-to-end -end yeah, product. But, but I see that market. very much in the vision of Drupal 11. I think it's in there. In making core smaller is maybe part of that and, and, and also saying that, for example, a JSON API is very strategic to that. So yeah. that, that integration approach, I think, is still there also. Mm -hmm. So I don't but see it. It's not explicit at the moment. Yes. And that's it's the not explicit. Okay. If it, if there it, you're right. If, yeah. if it becomes explicit as a community, we have something to work to. Yeah. Okay, we want to be the number one open source DXP together with an open source CRM, open source digital asset management system, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have something to work towards to, and now mm -hmm. we are working on the project. But, but if you're talking about explicit, DXP is still a very difficult term. So probably if we all give a, de give a definition of it, we yeah. probably will have six uh, on the podium and uh, 20 in the audience. And, that, and that's where marketing should come. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> no, but I very much agree on yeah. making it explicit, but then we have some job to do with what DXP means in the context of open source. To me, DXP, DXP is much about making stuff work together so marketeers can get stuff done and not so much about personalization of marketing automation but making stuff work together uh, so that's probably a very broad uh, definition of the experience. you could say right there are more stories to tell yeah the, 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 yeah. the uh, ambitious side build story or the DXP story yeah. uh, a good thing about the ambitious side building thing is of course we are all working we're all looking for co-workers and uh, people on our company so yeah. Uh, it would be nice if there is you know, some new, uh, yeah, some new people uh, around in the community, and if they um, uh, can be, um, uh, if if Drupal can be attractive to them, yeah. uh, younger people, I would say, yeah. <laughs> I do not consider myself that old, but uh, well, yeah. I see a lot of the same people uh, every year, yeah. and it's a good thing to have young people on board, and um, uh, perhaps the ambitious side building thing is, is uh, more interesting uh, for those people to have them on board on your companies. That might be a positive thing about uh, the... Uh, okay, well, 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 thank you very much. One question about Drupal 11 and uh, <laughs> all uh, on the go, so it's great. Um, uh, Bert, one more thing about that. Um, when Apple uh, launched the iPhone, they made a lot and lots of money on the iPhone and the App Store, and they forgot the developer. So the MacBook was initially dropped dead for like five or ten years with no updates. Then Apple found out, hey, if we if we don't 
create the ecosphere on the front end where the, where the, the innovation happens, we're not going to maintain the, 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 the the money we make on the iPhones anymore. So they created a new, a new MacBook, and, and the developers came back, and, and hence the iPhone is still. I think that actually when it comes to the persona who, for who Drupal is, yeah. it might be a good thing that it's again for the, for the cheerleader. That's again for those who are using Joomla for their shoebox vereniging, who again for people that are not our prime, uh, for market-wise, not, we're not going to make any money of it, but we're going to have many eyeballs, and that's the core principle of open source. So, Dries often says uh, they're not mutually exclusive, as he said, but with everything, and so he's never made any choice, which is hard. But it can be and for your customer, and for me as, a, uh, as someone who is... So I think, Heine, thoughts on that, for making not a choice, doing both? Excuse me? Having, having thoughts on doing and the ambitious side builder and your customer who is not an ambitious side builder because you're not doing right. back vereniginge. <laughs> can you do both? I think you can do yeah. both. Yeah. I, I think it's very uh, important to attract new people to this community and that's why I pointed out that recipes and that stuff is very important important to to uh, maintain uh, this community and build from it and uh, I think you can look at that the high-end uh, DXP CMS systems are our competitor but you can also look at wouldn't it be great that people instead of opening an open, uh, open uh, social media channel would would also install a new website and uh, create their own platform there. Okay, I know maybe that's not realistic for everybody, but I think mm. that should be in this approach, uh, and that's also very much with the, the purpose of the open web, uh, uh, where we're not all on the algorithm of one of the platforms that uh, we have eyeballs on our content. Yeah. But do we know why it wasn't always there? <laughs> You know, yeah, we're talking about these kind of things, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You think so? It was always there? Yeah, because uh, one of the important properties of Drupal for us is that we can make uh, a lot of uh, stuff work with minimal uh, um, perspiration, if you want. Um, also, uh, junior developers can uh, get up to speed very quickly and make impressive uh, uh, sites. And then you fly in some senior developer who makes a very nice uh, plugin. So web form submissions go to some custom CRM or uh, some some kind of power automate, uh, and and that's what what makes our websites uh, very cost effective, I think, for uh, for customers. Absolutely. So the ambitious site builder is 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 our agency, and then we have people who do uh, the the theming. We have people who do the. Uh, integrations and we have people who uh, use views and, and fields and, and stuff to make it all uh, work together. One of the um, things that is big in the new Drupal versions that's going to come up is automatic updates, which is, uh, which is something that I love. I don't know which Chrome version I'm using, I think 104, but I don't care basically. It's called uh, yeah, evergreening your system. Well, it's very hard in, in CMS landscape, but we trust our phone with it. I mean, our phone is updating all the time. Um, so, will we enter a stage where, um, where, where CMSs are out, up, automatically updated, even if you have an SLA with the customer and you, you say, hey, but we're going to have, we're going to make sure that it's going to run, we, we promise that it's going to run, we're going to test every release. Will there be auto updates and yet have an SLA with your customer and, and, and deliver the value that you promised? Is that an option? Yes. How? Um, well, the fact is, is that we we live in a in an era where there's a lot of cyber security, uh, was a lot of security needed on on your platform, and and of course you build it straight away, as safe as possible. But uh, cyber attacks will happen, and yes, you have your hosting provider that will support you with that. But there's always a first line and second line uh, support needed in any case, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, Automatic updates, I think a lot of developers would be very happy if uh, uh, automatic updates are, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, 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 part of Drupal uh, because of the tedious work that uh, that updating brings in and most of developers would like to focus on, on developing in, instead of updating uh, the platform. So I think it, it can coexist. And we briefly discussed up front that there might be other options to have recurring revenue, which is a core basis of any agency. What are, what are other options to, to deliver Will you go to content? Will you go to uh, will you go to automatically scanning websites for performance? What 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 other 
uh, uh, performance, uh, UX design optimization, uh, content production, uh, uh, well, numerous, yeah, so. Yeah, I always a bit more people than most agencies here. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that, well that's, that's basically the belief and the, and, and the promise that IO has been, has been delivering uh, uh, as an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, agency. And Heine, you work with partners for that, right? Yeah. For, for delivering more than just the code. Right, yeah, so uh, we have uh, one preferred partner, Pupixel, who is uh, who's, uh, working closely with us to do uh, designs and we also do sales together. And, yeah. uh, uh, we have someone for analytics, for example, to interpret the data. But going back to automatic updates, uh, I've seen the uh, automatic updates initiative change shape uh, quite significantly in the past two or three years. Um, and I may have also been partially responsible for some of those changes uh, because I've reviewed early samples of the update uh, system. And I'm not... So first of all, it has to materialize before we have to... Mm -hmm. uh, panic about it or uh, integrate uh, it. Uh, and I, I, I'm not sure if the way it's currently proposed is really going to work with our workflow uh, because it's, 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 um, it's going to update uh, on a production site, for example. I, I, I don't want my uh, PHP code that's running the site also uh, issue composer update commands uh, on the same server. Um, uh, it, it even it, it should be able to create a staging site, uh, apparently. I'm not sure how that's going to work um, on, on production environments. And also, in practice, we see a lot of uh, uh, semantic versioning that's, uh, that's going to break uh, rather important stuff. So I don't see it happening on the production side. So it has to happen somewhere else, which then has to pass a test suit before you can do it. But what I really would like to have um, is something that would patch or update sites on production for highly critical security issues, like those uh, mm -hmm. where you have window of maybe two hours to seven hours before uh, someone else patches. You're toast, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and that's something I'm still missing. And uh, there is a, a Drupal Steward program from the association where you can pay into uh, some some rules that should help, but. Um, I'm not talking now as a security team member, but if I look back at all the security announcements that have been made, yeah. <coughs> then uh, there is only a very limited uh, usefulness of this steward program because very often there are no rules provided because it was not high security or, or highly critical, but maybe it's highly critical for your side, mm -hmm. uh, which is a problem. And the other part is that uh, a lot of vulnerabilities appear not to be amenable to these rules. So. Um, like it's everywhere or... So we're yeah. still going to patch, we're still going to eat pizza, and we're still going to have a Drupal get on three? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we have uh, made a script for ourselves where we can auto-patch sites uh, very quickly by having an inventory of vulnerable sites, a patch, maybe multiple patches if you have multiple versions, and then we, we auto-patch those uh, in the night of the release. So no pizza. No pizza, <laughs> okay. and, no, no, and, and no global solution, but it's there is real, no a company solution, right? right? Because yeah. uh, at the same time, we are all doing these kind exactly. of uh, solutions. So the automatic update initiative yeah. will be very great for my personal blog, for example. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I have to update Drupal more often than I update the content on it. I've switched to... Uh, but that's the same nice. thing yeah. that you mentioned earlier, that it's important for the small websites that we have this automatic update feature, and then we mm. have... Yeah, we as agencies have our own procedures and CSAD yeah. to manage these uh, things, but it, it should really be there. A, th a thing that I find interesting is now that Drupal is so dependent on uh, external technologies and components that making updating easy b becomes very important. We did uh, how many years with Drupal 7 and it's going mm. to outlive uh, Drupal 8 or 9. And now that when we made uh, the change to Symfony and CK Editor and now, now PHP 8, yeah. uh, making updates is, is, is important to um, uh, yeah, the build, the SLA to the customer. You don't have very much to show for it at the, at the front end. Uh, so that's also a reason why updating should be easy. You mean easy, uh, that it doesn't provide business value? Yeah, it doesn't right. provide business right. value. And 
And, uh, and ook met de yeah, nieuwe uh, versie nummers. Uh, well, dit jaar hebben we een Drupal 9 upgrade to all of our clients. En we zeiden, well, we need a little bit more than the SLA. En uh, oké, okay. uh, now, now we're yeah. going to release Drupal 10. En yeah. ik denk dat het een promis is, right? Ik uh, denk dat Drupal promised. <laughs> The world <laughs> that 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 uh, that updating should uh, should be easy. So I'm really confident <laughs> that it should be easy, right? And um, uh, uh, I think uh, um, uh, the the key thing is uh, here is um, there's much surrounding Drupal. So also the PHP. Well, um, we're, we're gonna wait if it's really easy. But mm -hmm. It is a promise. Yeah. yeah. From, from from a branding perspective. It sounds weird, but uh, it's also important to have automatic updates because how many times do we read that thousands of thousands of WordPress websites have been hacked uh, at once because of a security leak? Yeah. You know, and and it's, it's the smaller website that, that uh, Brett has been referring to. Um, uh, uh, if those websites are all updated automatically, we don't see the large number of hacks we see currently with, yeah. uh, with WordPress. Yeah, with WordPress, it has been in core for a long time, auto updates, and it works like a charm, but don't go to Contrib because That's the same, mm -hmm. the same yeah. Yeah. as ever. Yeah. And Drupal has a bit more standing, I think, at least when it comes to Contrib, but, yeah. but still uh, not much fixed. I mean, you, if you, ca yeah. you can't fix code that's not fixable or, or not maintained even. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, coming back to Drupal 7, that's, uh, that's an interesting point of view because um, if you go to buildwith.com or even drupal.org slash whatever, there's a project page where you can see how many installs there are. There are over a million Drupal sites right now, at least that's what the general number is. There might be less or more. Half of them are dr running Drupal 7, which is built 16, 17 years ago, released 14 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, IA6 is uh, more modern, more modern yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. um, yet, there has been made a decision by the DA or by a higher ranking of that there's extended support. For what reason is that really? Because it's not for the agency, right? I mean, the agency wants them off. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I thought, uh, well, <laughs> it's not a very positive approach, but you, you can, of course, communicate a larger market share <laughs> if there are a lot of Drupal 7 sites out there. And uh, uh, Drupal 7 to 9 or Drupal 7 to 8 is, is a pain for development, so uh, the upgrading process isn't easy. <laughs> so, so um, well, to, to think a bit negatively, uh, I think um, uh, the extension is done because uh, all those people relying still on the Drupal 7 uh, environments. And do you as an it's agent... Not negative, that's scare, scare, right? Uh, you mean sca sca being scared? No, I care. mean care. Care, yeah. Oh, you, you think it's oh. care? Yeah, it's, okay. it's certainly care as okay. well. Yeah. But, but uh, I like the approach of being, uh, seeing it as, as care, but it is a big thing for, for companies um, Customers, uh, we have um, um, tenders are written to have companies um, uh, write their offers, and um, um, well, of course, a lot of uh, money is involved, going from seven to nine. And, yeah, and then and you then have then exactly what you had before. Yeah. Yeah. As a yeah. as a customer, so. Yeah. You have exactly what you have before, yeah. but but you have to. Uh, um, uh, there are tenders which say, well, we have to go go to nine uh, at November. And then communicating um, a few months before <laughs> that it's not November, but uh, a year extra, uh, and maybe more. <laughs> Definitely, probably. Um, and I think that that's about being predictable. I think uh, Drupal can uh, foresee this and being more predictable about it. You can. Um, it, it it is not that predictable at this moment uh, when deciding to offer the extension a few months before the initial ending of Drupal 7. I think, I think data forced the, the hand there because uh, we saw that there were no, uh, or there were a lot of sites that didn't update. So uh, at certain amounts of time left, then you realize it's not going to happen. So mm. you can then let those people go and, and put them out to the cold, or you can say, well, we extend it. And, uh, yeah, but it, it has a lot of uh, impact yes, on, yeah. on companies already in the process of going from seven to nine and spending big money and having teams having uh, uh, on it. Um, I, I think that's yeah. that's not the most professional approach to it. Yeah. I, I, I understand it's very uh, it's not easy this process, of course. But well, okay. I, I do have a question on a completely different topic. 
because uh, I've been walking around here today, and what caught my attention is the, uh, uh, the rate of male compared to uh, female. Diversity and inclusion, that's a topic that's really close to my heart. Yes. And I was curious if that is a problem for any of uh, you uh, as a company, as an organization, trying to get new talent. Um, is it in any of your four companies' focus to look specifically at the topic of diversity and inclusion? Uh, yes, we do. Um, we recently had an event around uh, diversity and, uh, and inclusion, and uh, uh, it's for us it's, it's high on the agenda to have a diverse uh, 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 well, set of colleagues at, uh, at I.O. Why? Um, there's, there's been a lot of research about diverse mm -hmm. companies, and they perform better. Yeah. You know, because there's, there's different insights, there's different point of views coming together, um, and you just perform better. So, so yes, it's, uh, it's high on the agenda. And your labor potential is twice as big. It's a, even if you don't do it for the quality, which is a valid, very valid reason, yeah. if, you, if you could hire twi twice as many people, why don't you? I mean, uh, if there are just as much females as males and just as much... True. But even, but even when I was... Uh, uh, because previously I had my own company, uh, it, it, it always has been an important topic for me personally. I'm currently uh, the managing director of, of Utrecht, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that policy, that, that, that vision of me, has been the same within my campus. Yeah. yeah. And, and for any of the other companies, uh, is it also a focus area, or um, are you happy with the way it is? For our company, diversity um, uh, is a fundamental thing. Um, I would not say it's a, it's a focus area. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps it's, it's what we were always doing. Um, um, but I agree with Michel about uh, it, it, uh, it, fastens, uh, it fastens your um, capabilities of serving the market in a way. Thank you very much. Another topic which is close to my heart is open source and open source communities and um, uh, contributions to the open source community. Uh, does anybody of you want to say something about uh, contributing back to the open source uh, community, in this case to the Drupal uh, community? Who would like to say something about oh, this? I think everybody, but uh, uh, it's, it's vital you know, uh, uh, for, for smaller companies, for larger companies to, to give back in, in many ways. You could give back in code, but you can also uh, be a sponsor. You could uh, help with marketing efforts. You can be, uh, you take a role within uh, a board. There's many different ways to, to contribute. And I think that's vital. Yep. If you use it, you should contrib in any way. Any other opinions or additions to this? I think it's important to choose what kind of contributions you are willing to make and also what kind of contributions you're willing to sustain because uh, um, our experience is that uh, if, if you, for example, contribute um, uh, a patch or a module, it's also good to explicitly state what kind of uh, support you're going to give because uh, some modules are very useful for us, maybe once or twice, uh, or a patch is essential for one of our uh, sites, uh, for, for instance, when, when fixing a bug. But uh, we're not really... Um, involved any further uh, and um, so, so then you can make it explicit we're looking for a new maintainer or we're looking for uh, or, or this is the patch do with it what you want but uh, mm -hmm. th wrong, this is as far as we go to help but you can also say well we have a few key areas or for example accessibility or um, uh, support on the security working on the security team or uh, uh, providing documentation or helping uh, with sprints that, that you can make uh, yeah, really a promise on. So then you can also uh, help people even more because if you if you give something and then drop it without stating that that it's now for the community and that's where it ends, then you create uncertainty and uh, you, you keep people yeah. back. So. Yeah. And is, are there challenges? Sorry, you want to say something about this? Well, uh, and, and um, it's something uh, that should be agency driven as well. So the, the yes. giving back to the community. Uh, something I really liked about last year, what we did is working together with other companies, which also, yeah, well, can be, of course, uh, competing for, uh, for for clients. But in this case, we were working on a uh, on a on a module with three companies: uh, Sim, Open Social, and uh, uh, f uh, Finalist. And uh, what I liked about it is that together we developed a much better uh, solution, oh, wow. which is well, uh, well, which is for widespread use. So that's really 
nice that you can do it. And I think Drupal is uh, all about that collaboration. Yeah. And I heard something about a system uh, that's going to be introduced already is in, in, in the starting process where uh, companies actually are being judged on how much they contribute to the open source communities. Any thoughts, any opinions on this uh, uh, sort of rewarding model? I, th I think that's very important. We are all, all looking for how can you make the open source business model work. Eh? And mm -hmm. did the Dries note on that, makers versus takers. And mm -hmm. uh, we've been a taker before we uh, uh, were makers ourselves. And you want to be a good citizen, but you also have this thing, okay, how does it make this stand out in the community and deliver on my promise? And, um, and, and then you really have to choose where you want to be this maker and, uh, 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 and then you, uh, you need the spotlight on that from the community as well. Yeah. And so also from customers. And from there was one RFP lately where it explicitly said you can only write down this tender if you have X amounts of uh, points yeah. in the gamified yeah. system. Yeah, but that was an, uh, that was an illegal tender. It was less because, yeah, yeah. It not, not strictly uh, in the legal sense, mm -hmm. but it was uh, a pre-selected company, so that's why. Yeah, okay. Only the companies here, literally only the companies right. here, including mine, uh, that were, had enough points to actually, <laughs> uh, and congratulations on that one, I think. Was it Maastricht? Um, Maastricht, yes. Maastricht? Yes. Yes. On rewards? Tilburg. 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 Sorry. Was it about contributions? Yeah, you had to have a number of amount of points. So the game it of was fights. also in the Maastricht and there. Yeah, I'm I think sure. so. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> Still, congratulations. But, but um, one of the nice things is that Drupal.org has uh, improved its credit uh, yeah. scoring yes. in things that are not. I'm, I'm not aware of those. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not <laughs> 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 uh, but we are aware <laughs> that <laughs> you won the tender. <laughs> but but yeah. indeed, it is one of the flaws in the current system, if you could call it a flaw, is that it's, I, it's, I it's agree. only modules. So. Um, yeah. Time that, for example, organizing this or non-code contributions, which are as as important as yeah. but are important, are not counted or not counted. That the much. the uh, interesting thing is that with the migration to GitLab in the future, this is a very much talked about point. So mm -hmm. uh, will GitLab integrate this kind of credit system? And yeah. then it would be nice if it, if this way of um, uh, is. A spread to other open source uh, solutions yes, as well. Yes, indeed, Drupal yeah, is leading there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, but, yeah. but, but as, as, as Bert says, you know, the, the, the non-code contributions yeah. are equally as, as, as valuable, um, I think, if, if yeah. you look at that. I agree on well, that. Take Bert, for example, the amount of time he has spent Don't in code. the Drupal community. No. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the amount of time you've spent uh, uh, organizing these events, uh, uh, setting up the, the Dutch uh, local association, mm -hmm. you know, that is, so much valuable uh, uh, that should be, to my opinion, rewarded in, in some sort of points as well. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe GitHub will, uh, I, d I doubt it, but maybe GitLab, <laughs> GitLab sorry, uh, uh, yeah, GitLab will, will, yes. uh, yeah. Uh, will solve that. Who knows? Yeah. And we need to, pref to prevent uh, perverse uh, um, things like uh, when, when I point out a security issue in a, yeah. a non-committed patch, yeah. then I don't really get credit, so I can be, uh, wait and, until it's a highly critical issue uh, on thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of sites and then report it and then maybe even get some money for it. Yeah. I know a company that actually um, creates a bug, or cr that's wrong, sorry, cr creates a, uh, an issue, patches it and then gets the point. Yeah. Right. Doing oh. it all the, time. The, whole yeah. the, whole the whole question is, would, would we be worse off if there wasn't a, uh, a yeah. gamified system? I mean, then when nothing would have been done. So um, there, they're gaming the system. That's uh, but that's why, for example, it's, it's important to, uh, to value all contributions because you can maybe find uh, 50 different vulnerabilities, all the same, or you can write a documentation page how to prevent this. Exactly. And then uh, yeah. you don't have to make those issues. Yeah. So, but are you focused on, 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 on this gaming system? No. Is it? Okay. No. Sorry, I call it gaming system, but uh, gamified system is a better wording. Yeah. I think it's important to, if you are a module developer, and also if you are a module developer uh, as a company, that you do it in the open, so that you also, you don't just put in functionality, but you really uh, say why you did it. So it's, I think it's logical to make an issue for new features or bug fixes. Okay, I want to go to a uh, closure, but uh, 
for the closure, I would like to hear from all of you four if you look at uh, Drupal where it is right now and where you think it will be when we have our 25th birthday in four years' time. Um, so uh, let me start uh, here, Matthias. <laughs> uh, it's difficult to say, and the, the, the thing I want to say is that I'm enthusiastic about the way where Drupal is going to the future, but also returning more to its core, so I think the, the folks on the ambitious site builder is the right one, and I hope that it will attract new clients, but also new amateurs, if you like, to mm -hmm. Drupal, because I think that would be vital to the ecosystem and the community. Can one of you, uh, I will continue. And, 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 I, and I hope back that we have to steal back the web from the uh, social media companies. And I, I, we oh. should have a fight over that. Okay. So we should be aggressive on that. The, the Drupal actually, should be aggressive. Okay, Drupal should be aggressive. I like yeah, that quote. <laughs> for fighting for the open web. And yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah, the open web, absolutely. And um, if you look at uh, Drupal, for me as uh, somebody looking from outside uh, to uh, Drupal and, and comparing it to other CMSs, uh, open source CMSs, but also proprietary CMSs, mm -hmm. um, how is uh, Drupal doing at this time? Maybe that's a good question for our marketeer here. Yeah, well, I think Drupal's <laughs> doing a very great job um, yeah? in, 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 in many ways. Um, it's, it's serving uh, mid-range to, to high-end customers. Yeah. So that's been the focus point since Drupal 8. Yeah. Um, uh, it's open source, it's secure, uh, it has a, a, a large uh, market share. Um, and of course, there's, there's lots to improve mm -hmm. you know, from a branding perspective, from a positioning per perspective. Um, but, but it's doing an absolutely great, great job. But, but by the looks of the, 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 the great projects that all developers here in the room are, are, are currently building, uh, the, the projects I see at uh, uh, the, the, the Drupal Splash Awards every year uh, uh, around Europe, um, we're doing great. Cool, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Heine, how is uh, uh, Limon Groen uh, doing uh, when uh, Drupal turns 25? I hope it's still doing very well. I <laughs> expect it will do very well. Um, how Drupal will develop, um, I think it will be sufficient for a lot of sites and a lot of type of clients. But it's uh, what we already see uh, that has happened in the past few years, but will happen even more strongly, is that Drupal is just a part of a larger solution. Yes. Uh, that you either have to uh, do as well, mm -hmm. which is in some cases uh, the easiest, and in some cases you have to do with partners. All right, thank you very much. And finally, finalist. Yeah, I agree on the uh, larger ecosystem of mm -hmm. uh, Drupal. I think that's the whole, uh, the whole power of Drupal uh, nowadays. Um, I think we're competing with uh, those uh, um, headless CMSs uh, like Content Stack or Contentful as well, which which all uh, which mainly focuses uh, at, at the content management expertise. So I think uh, Drupal will exist in four years, and um, uh, I think the um, uh, the approach should be, bo be more about um, uh, being a part of the ecosystem and uh, from a content delivering uh, uh, perspective. Um, even the word site or site builder, I think, I, I don't know, uh, sites? <laughs> yeah, if we're talking about site builder, yeah. we just had a talk about voice and <laughs> AR and kiosk, and then maybe site builder is yes. not a good persona <laughs> yeah. to choose, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, um, I want to thank you uh, all very much for your contribution today and your contribution to the open source communities. And uh, your contribution is already uh, confirmed here by uh, being a sponsor. So thank you, uh, all of you, very, very much uh, for thank this. You. And um, uh, everybody at home, everybody here in the room, thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day. At, uh, we have lunch now. And at 2 o'clock sharp, we will uh, restart with the program. We have some great keynotes for you coming. And of course, uh, at the late afternoon, Bert will do the pub quiz. Infamous Thank you very much. Oh, Bert, you <laughs> wanted to say something? No, no, the infamous pub quiz. So hook up <laughs> some, some people, five, five people, and uh, uh, have fun. So that's cool. Bert, you as well. Thank you very much. Everybody at home, thank you very much. And in the room, have a great day. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.